the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have uh, a couple of uh, designation of National Crime Victim Rights Week, and I think another presentation. Mm -hmm. Hello there. How are you this morning? I'm fine. How are you? Fantastic. <clears throat> Claremont County Commissioners Proclamation National Crime Victims Rights Week, April 8th through the 14th. Whereas over the past year, 2,500 victims have reported crime in Claremont County, received services from the Claremont County Prosecutor's Office, Eastern Area, YWCA, and other local victim service providers with the understanding that the time invested in crime victims' rights and services develops a system of victim response that can help victims recover from crime. And whereas researching and serving all victims of crime is essential to supporting communities, because those who receive services and support are more likely to remain invested in the criminal justice process. And whereas dedicated victim service providers are working every day to meet the needs of crime victims, yet there are still many victims without meaningful access to rights and services, understanding that victims face barriers such as isolation, language limitations, lack of transportation, and cultural barriers that keep them from assessing the services and the criminal justice system. And whereas we must make a dedicated effort to expand the circle of those prepared to respond to victims and link them to the resources that can help victims recover while engaging a broader network of providers, community leaders, faith organizations, educators, and business to provide new links between victims and services that improve safety, healing, and access to services, justice, and whereas the Claremont County Prosecutor's Office, through their collaboration, with the many victim service providers is hereby dedicated to strengthening victims and survivors in the aftermath of crime, building resilience in our communities and our victim responders and working for justice for all victims. Now, therefore, let it be proclaimed that we, the Claremont County Board of Commissioners, recognize the week of April 8th through the 14th, 2018, as National Crime Victims Rights Week in Claremont County and ask all citizens of Claremont County to take the time to honor crime victims and those that serve them during this week and throughout this year. And it's signed the Claremont County Board of Commissioners, Claremont County, Ohio, Edwin H. Humphrey, President, David L. Painter, Vice President, and David Hubel, Member. Congratulations and thank you for all the work that you do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And? I just, just briefly, um, you know, we talked about we had over 2,500 people in our county that were victims of crime last year. And I think it's important to realize that those are victims of reported crime, that we still have a lot of people who will not report their crime for various reasons. Um, but of that reported crime, I think that it's also worthy to note that the highest numbers that our office has served this past year, it was 344 people, uh, adult physical assault, and 31 um, sexual assaults on adults. Uh, 110 cases of child physical abuse or neglect in our office, 723 cases of domestic violence, um, 695 cases of theft um, or financial crime, 130 cases of stalking, and 78 cases of violation of a court order. So of the 2,500 people that we did serve last year, we had um, over 2,800 different types of crime that we did serve. So I think that's important to note as well. Um, the age limit that the majority of these crimes occur are 18 to 44 so that's you know something also that's worthy to to recognize um, second you know marcy's law we did a train there was a training yesterday on marcy's law which we're still all trying to figure out um, i have some resources at our office if anyone's interested in that i'd be happy to try to point you in the right direction and then just lastly our annual crime victims rights week luncheon is going to be held on thursday april 12th at the patterson park lodge um, Starts at noon, lunch and networking is at 11.30, and that's it. Thank you very much. Before you yeah. leave, make sure they know who you are and what you do. My name is Stephanie Ross. I am the program director of the Victim Advocate Program at the Prosecutor's Office. So I have some, uh, some information I brought with me. Um, I'm easy enough to find, but uh, I'd be happy to help you if you have any questions.
regarding Marcy's Law or any other victims' rights or resources. So you brought yeah, someone here website. with you today? A what? You brought someone with you today. <laughs> This is Christy Panzarella. She is uh, one of my victim advocates as well. She serves mainly in juvenile court. She's our juvenile court advocate. However, she does provide services in all courts as well. We kind of all go, we serve felony court, municipal court, and juvenile court and handle all types of protection orders. Okay. Sorry. Very good. Picture. All right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were And we have a certificate of recognition for the 2018 Spring Litter Cleanup event. And I understand that you will be accepting this. Is that correct? If you want to Come on up. <laughs> if, you, if you are, I will be Lee, on behalf of the Board of Claremont County Commissioners, this certificate of recognition is awarded to you. Leah, it's Decatur, right? Yeah. In recognition of your award-winning design for the 2018 Spring Litter Cleanup event, the Board of County Commissioners, Claremont County, Ohio, this 21st day of March 2018, and it's signed by Edwin H. Humphrey, the President, David L. Painter, the Vice President, and David Ubel, member. Thanks for all that you did. You bet. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Congratulations. For you. And you, and you, you the podium, sure. If you wish, there's got to be a couple you things you need to say here. Oh, I just like to thank my mom. <laughs> she, she's coming with the poster. Yeah, I'll hold this up here for you. Yeah, she's the one that got me into this uh, litter cleanup contest last year, actually. And I won the grade level last year, and then I decided to go try again this year. It worked well. Congrats. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Yeah. It worked well. Yeah. You know, it, it, and it's okay to be at this podium and say, you know, I'd like to thank all the little people. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well, great. Fantastic. Well, let's take a picture. Yeah. So we'd like our event sponsors to get up with her, too. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so Lauren and Southern Ohio Association of Workers. We'll hold this design up for you. Oh, okay. Who else is here? Whoever else is here. Yeah. 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 He showed up. So uh, I'm Warren Walker with uh, Community Government Relations for Duke Energy, and Becky gave me this really cool script to uh, say to you today, and you guys messed it all up. But, but, but this part says, tell them who you are. Warren. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so I got that right. I mean, pretty fine print. So. Yeah, I know. It is. But, but really, uh, we're, we're here to recognize and announce the Spring Litter Cleanup Day, which is April 21st. Uh, we promised the weather will be a little bit better than today. Uh, it's getting snow on sp in spring is, is kind of uh, odd. But um, Spring Litter Cleanup Day is a combination of two events. Uh, those two events are namely the East Fork River Sweep and the Claremont Clean and Green events. Uh, th that event brings out hundreds of volunteers. And uh, for the past 20 years and more than 20 years, this event has been working to beautify our communities and uh, the parks uh, that are so valuable to Claremont County. Uh, the, the events coordinated by Valley View Foundation in the uh, Claremont County Soil and Water Conservation District. Again, the, the event is April 21st from 9 to noon at various locations, including uh, the East Fork, uh, areas along the East Fork, Little Miami River Watershed, Pierce Township, Villages, Felicity, and Waynesburg, and even uh, the city of Lynchburg in Highland County. Uh, volunteers work to remove litter and debris from the uh, banks and shorelines. Uh, I know that Duke Energy 
Uh, we've uh, partnered with uh, financial support as well as volunteers. Uh, I have a couple, two uh, co-workers that uh, bring their canoes out, and uh, they actually bring their fishing poles too, and so make it a combined effort. Um, but uh, last year, uh, I thought this was really impressive. Uh, 500 volunteers came out, removed over four tons of trash from 15 sites across the county. They cleaned 10 miles uh, of riverbank and lake shoreline, contributing to uh, almost 15 hours, hour, 15,000, nope, 1,500 hours of uh, community service. So a lot of effort there. And I do want to recognize uh, the organizations that partner with them. Um, for, with support, I, I mentioned Duke Energy Foundation, but there's the Southern Ohio Association of Realtors. We have a representative here. I just want to say a few words in the Claremont County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Uh, the Buckeye United Fly Fishers, who I understand uh, canoe down the, uh, the main stem of the East Fork and uh, picking up trash. Uh, the other uh, sponsors and support agencies include Claremont Office of <coughs> Environmental Quality, Claremont County Park District, Ohio State University Extension, Ohio Department of Natural Resources, the Divisions of Parks and Water, Watercraft, Highland Soil and Water Conservation District, and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Now, it was at this point in my speaking points that I was supposed to announce the grand winner. Uh, but, but that's okay. Really, really appreciate uh, being part of this program. It's a, it's a, it's a great design. But I, I'm going to turn it over to Greg Tainer to uh, say a few words. Sounds great. Thank you. Good after or good morning. I'm Greg Trainer, the 2018 president of the Southern Ohio Association of Realtors. We're very proud once again to sponsor the annual T-shirt contest along with the Duke Energy Foundation. The association is the voice for real estate in southwestern Ohio, and we represent over 550 members. We look forward to awarding the winner of their prize every year. And we have several realtors that actually participate in the event every year. After all, the majority of our realtors work and live in Claremont County, and it's imperative that we have a clean and desirable places to live in our neighborhoods so our neighborhoods can grow and prosper. We thank the commissioners of Claremont County and the Claremont County Water and Soil Conservation District for this opportunity to give back to our community. I'm pleased to announce this year's winner, which she already knows, <laughs> Leah. Um, Leah got involved in this contest last year after her mother brought it to her attention. According to Leah, she has always had a huge passion for art and enjoys making homemade creations for friends and family in the future. Leah would like to become a physician's assistant and athletic trainer and would also really love to have her own workspace to create her homemade crafts. Leah, your artwork's amazing. Congratulations on the award. You meant the depiction? You meant that, actually, but you guys get up there. No, I'm not in it. You, all of you, and anyone else. I think the mother who reported it needs to be in there. Well, it's fine. Yeah, so, yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> you guys can go. <laughs> Now's your shot. <laughs> you guys don't have to. Well, you can't. It's really exciting. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I just told them, get it. This is their time to go if they need to go. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> they, <laughs> they run out of here like it's the flag, right? We didn't get Mr. McManus up there. We 
<clears throat> we didn't get Mr. McManus up there, so that we lost out a little. Well, Mr. Um, OEQ did, wasn't up there either. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so we have a consent agenda that was mailed to us. Do we have a, I believe we had a chance to look it over. Are there any items that need to be pulled from the consent agenda for individual discussion and further consideration? If not, I'll let entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as a whole. So moved. Second. Yeah. Yes. Aye. Uh, we skip to page five, item 10, resolution to pay our bills. We have bills in the amount of $1,331,339.12. Resolution 37-18, do we have a motion to approve that resolution? So moved. Second. Painter. Yes. Humphrey. Aye. And item 11, Mr. Grabowski. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Agenda item number 11 is a recommendation for myself, Wade Grabowski, Director of Facilities Management, with the concurrence of Mr. Thomas J. Igle, County Administrator, to approve the request to advertise for bids for janitorial services for various county facilities, pursuant to specifications, therefore, and to authorize the clerk of the board to place a legal notice in a newspaper of general circulation on Thursday, 329, 2018, scheduling a non mandatory pre bid conference building tour on Wednesday, 4 4, 2018, at 10 a.m with bids to be received until 2 p.m. local time on Thursday, 419, 2018, in the Office of the Board of County Commissioners, uh, 101 East Main, Batavia, where they will be publicly open and read aloud shortly thereafter. This notice is also posted on the Claremont County's website at www.claremontcountyohio.gov. As you remember, um, late last year we formed a committee which actually comprised of about eight different individuals from various county departments. Um, we wrote the spe specifications completely, made them user-friendly, but also with a performance clause. It was approved by the uh, uh, civil division. And now to go out to bid. Okay, very and, good. And how long have we had that contract in place, Wade, that we currently have? This now? is the third year. Third year. Yes. Okay. Wade, this is an increased level of service, correct? Um, well, we're asking for that, correct? We're asking for a slight increase. However, we have actually reduced the specifications. And what I mean by that is getting very specific on the janitorial duties. Things that are antiquated, like uh, bonnet mopping and things like that, that were in the specifications have been taken out. You don't do that anymore. So, you know, this has been a rollover of probably 15 to 18 years of specifications. We've gotten very precise in this, in this particular spec. So. And accountable and accountable. The performance, and Judy's just reminding me, the performance uh, part of this is pretty detailed. Okay, good. Do we have a motion to approve the request to advertise for bids for janitorial service for various county facilities is contained in item 11? So moved. Second. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. You have item 12 also. Thank you, sir. This is actually uh, Ms. Suki Sheets' work. She did a good job on this one, Suki. Recommendation of Wade Grabowski, Director, Facilities Management, Fleet Maintenance Division, with a concurrence of Mr. Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to accept the total loss settlement offer from Allstate Insurance out of Farmington Hills, Michigan, in the amount of $11,203 for claim number 04875542206. For the 2013 Ford Econoline, damaged in an accident on January 1st, 2018, for final disposition of the offer stated claim. Do we have a motion to accept the total loss settlement offer as contained in item 12? So moved. Second. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. 13. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Eichel. Craig. You're up. Craig. Get a new copy of the agenda, huh? Yeah, I printed it out this morning. Item 13. All right. Item 13, recommendation of Patrick J. Munger, County Engineer, with the concurrence of Thomas J. Agle, County Administrator, 
to execute record plat number 6293037 for the replats of lots in the following subdivision located in Goshen Township. It's Telford Farm subdivision, the replat of lot number 17 and lot number 18. We have motion to execute the record plat number 629-3037. So moved. Second. Yes. Aye. <coughs> Next. Item 14 is recommendation of Patrick J. Monger, County Engineer, the concurrence of Thomas J. Agle, County Administrator, to execute record plat number 629-3038 for the replat of lots in the following subdivision in Miami Township. It's a replat of lot number four. It's Enterprise Circle Subdivision. We have a motion to execute the record plat as contained in item 14. So moved. Second. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Item 15. 15 is a recommendation of Patrick J. Munger, County Engineer, with the concurrence of Thomas J. Igle, County Administrator, to execute record plat number 6293039 for the replat of lots within the town of Salisbury, which is which is Mulberry, located in Miami Township, and it's a replat of multiple lots. Okay. A motion to execute the record plat is contained in item 15. So moved. Second. Yes. Humphrey. Aye. 16. 16 is a recommendation of Patrick J. Munger, County Engineer, with the concurrence of Thomas J. Agle, County Administrator, to execute record plat number 6293040 for the replat of a lot in the following subdivision in Pierce Township. It's a replat of lot number 56, Vineyard Hill Subdivision, Section 3. Okay, do we have a motion to execute the record plat as contained in item 16? So moved. Second. Yes. Aye. 17 is a recommendation of Patrick J. Munger, County Engineer, with the concurrence of Thomas J. Igle, County Administrator, to execute record plat number 6293041 for the replat of a lot in the following subdivision in Miami Township, Tanglewood Subdivision, Section 1, replat lot 107. This is to create a permanent highway easement uh, for a project on Branch Hill Guinea in the Cram Claremont County Transportation Improvement. Okay, we have a motion to execute the record plot as contained in item 17. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Thank you. Commissioner, would you like to allow Craig to do item 19 while he's while he's up the podium? Sure. 19. On me. 19. Recommendation of Patrick J. Monger, County Engineer, to approve the request to initiate procedures to vacate a portion of Omni Drive. Township Road 914, situated in Union Township, pursuant to Section 5553.04 of the Higher Voice Code, and further to authorize the Clerk of the Board to place a legal notice in the Claremont Sun for two consecutive weeks, Thursday, March 29th, 2018, designated the time and date for viewing and hearing, and the time and date for the final hearing for the proposed vacation, pursuant to 5553.05 of the Higher Voice Code. The viewing and final hearing on the proposed vacation of Omni Drive, situated in Union Township, to be held on Wednesday, April 25th, 2018, with the viewing at 9 a.m. and the final hearing at 11 a.m. at the office of the Claremont County Board of Commissioners. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the request to initiate procedures to vacate a portion of Omni Drive as contained in item 19? So moved. Second. Discussion? Yes. Um, Omni Drive, Exp just kind of expound on that. Tell me where that is. Omni Drive is off Eichholz Road, and it's an extension of the new Ivy Point Boulevard. Okay. Um, there was a portion of it that was, that was removed due to the ramps of the State Route 32 project in 275, and a portion of it at Eichholz was also realigned uh, as part of the Eichholz project. So the, the property owner at the end of Omni wishes to consolidate several parcels so he has a more buildable lot at the end of Omni. Okay. And that's what this does. It's a, it's a dead end road. Uh, there's probably approximately eight to ten parcels of property on it. And, and it's, it's the last step of this, right? Yeah. This, this project has been going on for, for, for multiple years. Yes. Eichholz says. And if they agree to it, you need to tell them about the consolidation of the lots, contention. Yes. Okay, we've had a motion and a second. We're ready for a roll call. Yep. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Thank item you. 20. Uh, nope. Item 18. 18. 
Hello, I'm Gary Bryant, Court Administrator for Juvenile Court. Morning. Recommendation of myself, Director of Court Services, Claremont County Juvenile Court, with the concurrence of Thomas Eigel, County Administrator, to execute Amendment Number Nine to the Contract for Detention Services by and between the County of Claremont, Ohio, by and through the Board of County Commissioners of Claremont County, Ohio, and the Judge of the Claremont County Juvenile Court and the County of Adams, Ohio, by and through the Board of County Commissioners of Adams County, Ohio, and the Judge of the Adams County Juvenile Court, previously ratified by the Board of County Commissioners on October the 12th, 2009, and subsequently those nine other times, for the allocation of two beds for the juvenile offenders at the Claremont County Juvenile Detention Center at a rate of $95 per day per bed, and any admissions of the juvenile offenders in excess of the guaranteed two beds based on availability at a rate of $101 per, per, per diem per bed. Effective March 1st, 2018 through February 28th, 2019. Pursuant to and in, in compliance with the terms and conditions set forth therein and with all other terms and conditions of the original contract and amendments there, thereto to remain in full force in effect. Okay. We have a motion to execute the amendment uh, to the contract for detention services at Juvenile. So moved. Second. Spainer. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Item 20. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Yvonne Smith, Benefit Coordinator <coughs> in Claremont County. It's my recommendation with the concurrence of Thomas J. Igle, County Administrator, to authorize Edward Humphrey, President of the Board of County Commissioners, to accept the terms of the stop loss insurance policy between Claremont County Board of County Commissioners and Sun Life Assurance Company of Canada, uh, which is a subsidiary of Sun Life Financial of Massachusetts, to provide stop loss insurance coverage for the county's medical plan, effective for the period of 1 1 of 2018 through 12 31 of 2018, pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions set forth therein. Okay, do we have a motion to accept the terms of the stop loss insurance policies contained in item 20? So moved. Second. Shana. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Item 21. Item 21 is authorizing me to sign on behalf of the board the letter of arrangement with the auditor of the state for our annual financial audit. Uh, the total estimated amount of the audit is $89,301. And Mr. Melman is here from the auditor's office. Should the board have any questions? Regarding the audit, okay. We have a motion to sign the letter of uh, to ask the administrator to sign the letter of arrangement, as contained in item twenty one. Do we have any questions? Well, let's let's have a motion and a second. Well, a and motion then we, and a second. Yep. So moved. Second. And Do we have any questions before we vote? Chris, could you just talk about? that audit i mean this is regular routine audit right i mean this is something that they do financial audit with the county every year we have that was done okay end results are posted general public once we have the once the audit's been completed we have a post audit then after that subsequently that then they will the auditor state will post the results yes and we've always had clean audits in the past that is and in fact received uh recommendations on the positiveness of our audits. Yes, we received the uh, Auditor of Distinction Award for our 2016 audit. Okay. And what's the time frame usually for the audit from the time that they do an entrance meeting to the time that they do the exit survey? Typically, uh, it's going to last anywhere from, uh, well, our audit opinion is usually dated uh, at the end of May. So we okay. do that in, uh, to, to, to help out with, with sewer, sewer water and sewer statements. Um, post audit's typically done in June. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a uh, roll call. Mr. Payne. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Item 22. Good morning. Suki Sheets with the Office of Management and Budget. We have a few financials for this week. First, uh, the first two are in the Common Pleas Probation and Son of Award Fund for overtime and fringe benefits. This is to do overtime using the uh, grant funds that they received last year. 
So they c we continue to increase that as they have a need to use those funds. So 15,000 in overtime and 3,000 in fringes. And then in the Emergency Management Agency Fund, other expenses, $69,931. This is a combination of two different items that we're appropriating. Uh, the first is $32,630 to reimburse the county capital fund for monies that went into EMA um, that should have gone to county capital. And the second is for the appropriation of a grant, the uh, SHSP grant at $37,300. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the financials? So moved. Second. Hainer. Yes. John Frank. Aye. Uh, next, we have executive session, is that correct? Yes, sir. So we have a need for executive session under 12122 G1 of the Ohio Revised Code to consider the appointment, employment, promotion, or compensation of one or more public employees. Do we have a motion to go into executive session under that section? So moved. Second. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Oh, we're back from executive session. The decisions were made. And it is now time for, uh, for uh, public participation. And I see the room is fairly va is vacant. So there is no public participation. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. That concludes our business for today. Thanks for joining us, and God bless. Have a great day.